everyone and happy therapy book Thursday and I know yesterday was Valentine's Day so if you celebrated happy Valentine's Day it didn't fall on a Thursday but we can still wish each other a happy Valentine's Day and I thought this book would be a fitting book to read because it's about um, this is called The Keeping Quilt by Patricia Polacco um, and it's about a family's enduring love and how they showed their love with a quilt. So we will read this today and you can notice some of those themes and how the family shared their love with this quilt throughout the book. And I actually learned um, in preparing to read this book that um, that this book was originally written in 1988 and recently updated to include new memories. So it is the same book you may have read parents or grandparents um, a couple decades ago, but it has been updated with some new material um, for you to enjoy. So here we go. The Keeping Quilt. When my great grandma Anna came to America, she wore the same thick overcoat and big boots she had worn for farm work, but her family weren't dirt farmers anymore. In New York City, her father's work was hauling things on a wagon, and the rest of the family made artificial flowers all day. Everyone was in a hurry, and it was so crowded, not like back home Russia, but all the same, it was their home, and most of their neighbors were just like them. Even Anna went to school. English sounded to her, when Anna went to school, excuse me, English sounded to her like pebbles dropping into shallow water. Shh, shh, shh. In six months, she was speaking English. Her parents almost never learned, so she spoke English for them too. The only things she had left of back home Russia were her dress and babushka. She liked to throw up into the air when she was dancing. A babushka is like a head covering. And her dress was getting too small. After her mother had sewn her a new one, she took her old dress and babushka. Then from a basket of old clothes, she took Uncle Vladimir's shirt, Aunt Havala's nightdress, and an apron of Aunt Natasha's. We will make a quilt to help us always remember home. Anna's mother said, it will be like having the family in back home Russia dance around us at night. And so it was. Anna's mother invited all the neighborhood ladies. They cut out animals and flowers from the scraps of clothing. Anna kept the needles threaded and handed them to the ladies as they needed them. The border of the quilt was made of Anna's babushka. On Friday nights, Anna's mother would say the prayers that started the Sabbath. The family ate challah and chicken soup. The quilt was the tablecloth. Anna grew up and fell in love with great grandpa Sasha. To show he wanted to be her husband, he gave Anna a gold coin, a dried flower, and a piece of rock salt all tied into a linen handkerchief. The gold was for wealth, the flower for love, and the salt so their lives would have flavor. She accepted the hanky and they were engaged. Under the wedding chuppah, Anna and Sasha promised each other love and understanding. After the wedding, the men and women celebrated separately. When my grandma Carl was born, Anna wrapped her daughter in the quilt to welcome her warmly into the world. Carl was given a gift of gold, flour, salt, and bread. 
gold so she would never know poverty, a flower so she would always know love, salt so her life would always have flavor, and bread so that she would never know hunger. Carl learned to keep the Sabbath and to cook and clean and do washing. Married you'll be someday, Anna told Carl. Carly? Carl? I might be saying that wrong. And? Carly. I'm going to say Carly. Again, the quilt became a wedding hoppa, this time for Carly's wedding to Grandpa George. Men and women celebrated together, but they still did not dance together. In Carly's wedding bouquet were a gold coin, bread, and salt. Carly and George moved to a farm in Michigan, and great-grandma Anna came to live with them. The quilt once again wrapped a new little girl, Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen called Anna Lady Grandma. She had grown very old and was sick a lot of the time. The quilt kept her legs warm. On Anna's 98th birthday, the cake was a click, a rich cake with raisins and candied fruit in it. When great grandma Anna died, prayers were said to lift her soul to heaven. My mother, Mary Ellen, was now grown up. When Mary Ellen left home, she took the quilt with her. When she became a bride, the quilt became her huppa. For the first time, friends who were not Jews came to the wedding. My mother wore a suit, but in her bouquet were gold, bread, and salt. The quilt welcomed me, Patricia, into the world. And it was the tablecloth for my first birthday party. At night, I would trace my fingers around the edges of each animal on the quilt before I went to sleep. I told my mother stories about the animals on the quilt. She told me whose sleeve had made the horse, whose apron had made the chicken, whose dress had made the flowers, and whose babushka went around the edge of the quilt. The quilt was a pretend cape when I was in the bull ring and sometimes a tent in the steaming Amazon jungle. At my wedding, men and women danced together. In my bouquet were gold, bread, and salt, and a sprinkle of wine, so I would always know laughter. Many years ago, I held Tracy Denise in the quilt for the first time. Three years later, my mother held Steve and John in the quilt for the first time. We were all so proud of Tracy's new baby brother. Just like their mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother before them, they too used the quilt to celebrate birthdays and make superhero capes. As the years passed and Tracy and Stephen were growing up, their grandmother took pleasure at every family gathering to tell the story of the quilt. We all knew whose clothes made each flower and animal. My mother was lucky enough to show the wonder of this quilt to my brother's, to my brother's grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. When my mother died, prayers were said to lift her soul to heaven. Tracy and Stephen were now all grown up and getting ready to start their own lives.
Now, as my children grow, this quilt has become a part of their hearts. I decided to share its story with children everywhere, so I wrote a book to take with me on school visits for students to learn all about my family and traditions. In time, my son promised his life to his bride under this quilt. I gave them both bread so they would never know hunger, salt so their lives would always have flavor, flowers so they would know love, and finally a coin so they would never be poor of spirit. When my daughter stood under this quilt to promise her heart to her partner, she too received bread, salt, flowers, and a coin. As the years passed, the keeping quilt became fragile. Without my knowing, my son and daughter took digital photos of the quilt and sent them to my sister-in-law and her quilting guild. Let's try that again. My recording may have stopped a little bit. As the years passed, the keeping quilt became fragile. Without my knowing, my son and daughter took digital photos of the quilt and sent them to my sister-in-law and her quilting guild. The photos helped them make an exact pattern of the original. They even researched online to find the right fabrics to recreate the quilt. One heart from the original quilt was removed and added to the replica. They talked about their own families and traditions as they sewed. My children presented the new quilt to me as a complete surprise on my birthday. Then I made a very hard decision with a bittersweet heart. I let the original keeping quilt leave my care to be on loan to the Maza Museum at the University of Finley in Finley, Ohio. It warms my heart to know that so many people will see the keeping quilt on display. Hopefully it will stir the beauty of memory and the richness of family in their souls, and they will take these feelings away with them. They will create legacies of their own. Now I take the new quilt to visit schools. Many hopeful brides and grooms have stood under it on their wedding day. It has covered many a table for special banquets. Children have run around using it as a cape in the backyard. It has covered the coffins of those in our family whom we have loved and mourn. But best of all, this quilt has wrapped the most precious gifts of all, new lives. The end. And there's a little note in here from the author. Dear ones, for a quarter of a century now, this book has been a part of my life as well as yours. It has been a heartfelt pleasure to chronicle the journey of this quilt from its creation at the turn of the century to present day. It is gratifying that I have been able to witness personally the impact of this story on all of you. I am honored that you have given this book to loved ones to punctuate their own family milestones and perhaps to inspire new traditions. Thank you all for being a part of this treasured celebration of kindred family, of kindred family and profound memory. Patricia. Polacco. This is a really cute book and I really like it. And um, if I mispronounce some of the words or the names, I do apologize. I tried my best. Um, and I just love the idea of this quilt being passed down and the story being passed down to generation after generation so that they could learn the meaning behind each of the animals and the fabrics that were included. And, you know, I know personally that it's hard to let go of memories and things like that. I'm so happy to know that uh, the quilt is in 
um, a museum where lots of people can view it and it can stay safe and that they were able to recreate a new quilt and continue to use that. And it's just such a wonderful story and I hope you can take this if, if, you're, um, if you're a kid and you're listening to this book and you've read this book, maybe you can start a tradition in your family or you can talk to your parents or caregivers or your adults about doing something that you can pass down and that you can use. It doesn't have to be a quilt, but it can be. As uh, an adult, I've learned about lots of ways that we can memorialize or remember people in our family or experiences. A lot of people nowadays do similar things to this quilt and they will take baby clothes or t-shirts and things that they don't want to get rid of and they'll put it into a quilt and they'll be able to use that themselves lay it on their bed take it pass it down do the same things kind of like in this to remember experiences i've seen people write notes on pieces of fabric that are then sewn into a quilt so people can remember whatever that experience was. Maybe it was a baby shower or a wedding. There are many things you can do specifically with a quilt um, like they did in this book and um, lots of other things you can do to remember somebody and pass something down from generation to generation. So uh, thank you for joining me. You can find this book in most libraries or where books are sold. It's also going to be on my Amazon wish list list uh, where I keep all of my books that I've read for Therapy Book Thursday. So you can easily find it there. And the link is in this post with this uh, reading today. I hope you enjoyed it and join me again next week for Therapy Book Thursday. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next week. Bye.